Good day, fellow disciple of Jesus. Welcome to prayer for Thursday, the 1st of September. I always feel like summer has ended when September 1st rolls around. That's not quite true, of course. We've got three weeks yet of the summer season, yet we also know we're turning quickly into the next season, fall. In the liturgical calendar, this also is a new season. This is the season of creation. I'd like to read to you, Christians around the world are invited to give particular attention to praying and caring for God's creation as part of the global season of creation, observed from September 1st to October 4th every year. General Synod of the Anglican Church of Canada in 2019 passed a resolution adopting the season of creation in the Anglican Church of Canada as a time of prayer, education, and action. We certainly will be praying for our relationship with the creation throughout the next month. Let us begin our prayer formally now. Let's take a deep breath and we'll continue with our introductory responses. God's love has been poured into our hearts. We dwell in God and God in us. Together, we dwell in God and God in us. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon God's name. Make known God's deeds among the peoples. Together, make known God's deeds among the peoples. Sing to God, sing praises to God, and speak of all God's marvelous works. Together, and speak of all God's marvelous works. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Together, who was and is and is to come. Amen. The Lord, the Creator, rules over heaven and earth. O come, let us worship. Let us pray. Loving Father and Creator of all, we come to you today deeply grateful for your creation. We look around us. We are amazed at the greatness and majesty of all that you have made. Nature around us speaks of your greatness. The vast expanse of the sky, the mountains, trees, lakes, and streams speak of your great design. You have given us such beauty in the colors of the rainbow, the beauty of flowers and fields. Words cannot adequately express the magnificence of all you have created. We join in praise with the writer of the Psalms. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. May we show our love and reverence to you, our Lord, by caring for all that you have created. We humbly give you praise and thanks. Amen. Psalm 37 is one of the wisdom psalms which gives us instruction for living in right relationship with God, our neighbors, creation, and ourselves. Do not fret yourself because of evildoers. Do not be jealous of those who do wrong, for they shall soon wither like the grass and like the green grass fade away. Put your trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on its riches. Take delight in the Lord, who shall give you your heart's desire. Commit your way to the Lord and put your trust in the Holy One, who will bring it to pass. God will make your righteousness as clear as the light and your just dealing as the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for God. Do not fret yourself over the one who prospers, the one who succeeds in evil schemes. Refrain from anger. Leave rage alone. Do not fret yourself. It only leads to evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait upon the Lord shall possess the land. In a little while the wicked shall be no more. You shall search out their place, but they will not be there. But the lowly shall possess the land. They will delight in abundance of peace. The wicked plot against the righteous and gnash at them with their teeth. The Lord laughs at the wicked because God sees that their day will come. The wicked draw their sword and bend their bow to strike down the poor and needy to slaughter those who are upright in their ways. Their sword shall go through their own heart and their bows shall be broken. The little that the righteous have is better than great riches of the wicked. For the power of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. The Lord cares for the lives of the godly, and their inheritance shall last forever. 
Let us pray. God, our strength, give us the humility to trust in your loving care and the patience to be faithful in seeking your kingdom, that we may come to share in the inheritance of your saints through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Together, glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We continue in Job's discussion with his friends. Eliphaz makes a brutal accusation against Job, accusations of Job's sinfulness, saying in chapter 15, verses 4 to 6, But you even undermine piety and hinder devotion to God. Your sin prompts your mouth. You adopt the tongue of the crafty. Your own mouth condemns you, not mine. Your own lips testify against you. We read of Job's response, selected verses from chapter 16 and 17. My face is red with weeping. Deep shadows ring my eyes, yet my hands have been free of violence, and my prayer is pure. O earth, do not cover my blood. May my cry never be laid to rest. Even now my witness is in heaven. My advocate is on high. My intercessor is my friend, as my eyes pour out tears to God. On behalf of a man he pleads with God, as a man pleads for his friend. Only a few years will pass before I go on the journey of no return. My spirit is broken. My days are cut short. The grave awaits me. If the only home I hope for is the grave, if I spread out my bed in darkness, if I say to corruption, You are my father, and to the worm, You are my mother or my sister, where then is my hope? Who can see any hope for me? Will it go down to the gates of death? Will we descend together to the dust? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Job is broken hearted by his tremendous personal loss, his sense of having been wrongfully accused and punished by God, and also by the judgment of his companions who see him only as a sinner and refuse to see the purity of his prayer, his integrity, and his good standing in the community and before the Lord. At the end of chapter 17, he seems to lose hope completely, hope only in the fact that he will soon die and be gone. In this very poetic language, he says, corruption, you are my father, worm, my mother, or my sister. If these are his closest companions, the worm and the grave, he is without hope. And yet earlier, he placed tremendous hope in which I think is a foreshadowing of our knowledge of Messiah, of Christ, our great companion, our great advocate, our great intercessor. He says, my intercessor is my friend, as my eyes pour out tears to God. On behalf of a man, he, the intercessor, he pleads with God as a man pleads for his friend. This is a wonderful image of Christ's ongoing intercessions for us. Really, our deepest hope is not in our own prayer life, but in Jesus' prayer for us. Thanks be to God. Together, the Apostles' Creed, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now we turn to our intercessions. As always, um, Be feel free to pause the recording so that you can make intercessions of your own. With confidence and trust, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. 
for the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church throughout the world. We pray to you, Lord, Lord, have mercy, for the mission of the Church, for the strategic planning as we go forward at St. Philip's, for our Missional Action Plan Steering Committee as they meet and discuss this fall, that we together in faithful witness may help to preach the gospel and witness to the good news of the kingdom of God to the ends of the earth, beginning in Unionville. We pray to you, Lord, Lord, have mercy. For the recently baptized, for their teachers, sponsors, and families, we pray to you, Lord, Lord, have mercy. For peace in our world, especially in Ukraine, especially in Syria and other war-torn countries of the world, that around the globe a spirit of respect and reconciliation may grow among nations and peoples. We pray to you, Lord, Lord, have mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, for all who suffer, for refugees, we pray for Zaki and the Hazini family, we pray for prisoners and all in danger. We pray that you would draw near to the sick. This day we pray for healing for Joan, for Severio, Eleanor, Rose, Ricardo, Laura, Richard, Joan, Michael, for young moms carrying new life in their wombs. We pray to you, Lord, Lord, have mercy. For all whom we have injured or offended, we pray to you, Lord, Lord, have mercy. For grace to amend our lives and to further the reign of God, we pray to you, Lord, Lord, have mercy. Gathering our prayers, we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. And now, friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious toward you. The Lord lift up countenance upon you and grant you peace this day and forevermore. Amen, amen. Have a blessed day today, Thursday, September 1st, the beginning of a new month.